In this video, we'll be sketching the graph of a sine function. The problem that we'll be working with is to sketch the graph of y equals 4 minus 2 times the sine of the quantity 3x minus pi. Now we'll need to compare this to um, this generic equation, y equals c plus a sine b times the quantity x minus d. We'll be following these guidelines for sketching graphs of sine and cosine functions. If you've not already done so, press pause and copy these guidelines down in your notes. When you're ready to continue, press play. Our first step is to factor b so that the equation is in this format. Notice that this x value has a 3 coefficient. This 3 needs to be factored out. So step 1 um, is to rewrite this. y equals 4 minus 2 sine. And then pull our 3 out. And we have x left inside the parentheses minus... And then in order to factor out a 3, we need to divide this term by 3. So we have pi over 3. Step 2, I want to find the amplitude. The amplitude is um, absolute value of a. So the absolute value of negative 2 is 2. But we are also going to need to notice that this is a negative sine curve. So make a note that it's a negative. Sine curve. Alright, our period is found with the formula 2 pi over b. So 2 pi over, and we said that b was 3. So 2 pi over 3. Also our vertical translation is found with the c value. And we can see that this is a positive 4. So our vertical translation is up 4. And then finally, our phase shift is the value of d. So our phase shift, since this is a negative pi over 3, our phase shift is to the right pi over 3. Our next step is to draw the guidelines. Since we're doing a vertical translation up 4, and I have an amplitude of 2, that means my max is going to be at 6, which is uh, 4 plus 2. And my min is going to be at 2, which is 4 minus 2. So my min for minus 2 is going to be here. My max is going to be at 4 plus 2, which is 6. And my center line will be just at the vertical translation, which is 4. Our next step is to find the beginning value on the x-axis. So we will be starting at pi over 3. 
And then our period, we need to divide by 4. So step 5 is to divide the period into four equal parts and see where we uh, plot the points. So our period is 2 pi over 3 divided by 4 gives us 2 pi over 12 or pi over 6. So our space in between our points is going to be pi over 6 radians. And that means then from our starting point, we start at pi over 3. And then we add pi over 6 to that, we get pi over 2. And then add pi over 6 to that, we get 2 pi over 3. And then add pi over 6 to that, we get 5 pi over 6. And then add pi over 6 to that, and we get just pi. Now, it may be helpful for you to um, have a common denominator on these. So I'm going to write this as 2 pi over 6. And then this would be 3 pi over 6. And then 4 pi over 6. 5 pi over 6. And 6 pi over 6. So each of my marks on my horizontal axis, I'm going to make that pi over 6 units. So label this. So my starting point is at pi over 3, which is 2 pi over 6. It's going to be at the center line because it's a sine curve, so that starts at the center line. But since it's a negative sine curve, I'm going to have to start here at the center line and head down. So I'm going to put a little arrow there just to remind myself that I'm going to have a negative sine curve. My next mark is going to be at the minimum since I'm heading down and it'll be at 3 pi over 6 which is pi over 2. And then my next mark which will be back up at the center line will be at 4 pi over 6. And then I'll head up to the maximum, and that'll be at 5 pi over 6. And then back down to the center line at 6 pi over 6, which is pi. Now I can continue to the left here so that I can have uh, more than just the one period. If I head left, I'll be at the maximum here at pi over 6. And then at the center line at 0. And then at the minimum at negative pi over 6. And then the center line at negative 2 pi over 6. So our curve... like this.